is a simple study on systematic evalu evaluation of the lifespan of lead apron that are used in uh, radiation protection. The outline would be on selection of uh, lead aprons, how do we maintain it, and how are you going to dispose it? Why we use lead aprons? Or there are also lead equivalent apron, aprons that are composite materi materials. The choice is because they have high atomic number, you can absorb, that's why it's high attenuation. And the selection criteria is usually composition of materials. It can be lead or it can be lead composite materials. And also some people want good fit, comfort, and less weight. Whether it's durable, some are lead free, or some are lead, ease of maintenance, how are we going to maintain? Certain aprons are some, something like coat aprons, wrap around, skirt and vest, used by various uh, cath labs. So generally what is we, uh, we select as lead equivalence is 0.25 millimeter of lead equivalence for um, minimum, but we do not use. Uh, generally we prescribe C arms uh, when we're using in operation data is 0.35 millimeter of lead equivalence and any cath lab we recommend 0.5 millimeter lead equivalence. The standard uh, lead is usually based on uh, lead rubber or lead vinyl, which is usually four to five kilos and has a very heavy burden on the body. The composite materials are based on barium, aluminum, antimony, bismuth, or tungsten. It's about three to four kilos, which is coming well recently. How do we uh, uh, do an acceptance testing? Visual, we can just see whether there's any tear on that or tactile run through with your hands the entire surface of the lead apron or the best method is to screen and find out using fluoroscopy or CT or radiography. But screening is done prior to the purchase, prior, prior after, soon after the purchase, as well as annually as part of the NABH standards. This is some of the study what we did. These are new aprons which have come. What we see here is the apron is being patched. The new aprons have been patched and are is torn and then so there's a patchwork here, combination of two different materials. Um, these are new aprons, we return it back. But how do we know whether there's equivalent lead equivalence? We can use a ionization chamber, which will cost about two to three lakhs. Well, it's too expensive to do it. But why not? We made a small test tool, which is only 50 rupees, which is made out of copper step wedge. We took a radiograph at 100 kVp, and then took uh, pixel values uh, from the a number of lead, st uh, lead strips which were seen here, there are the steps, and see which one is coordinating with each other and find out what lead equivalence it is. It's a very simple method. And also we need to do an inventory. We used a very another simple method, which is a plastic uh, filled with the contrast on this sample. And you can see the sample seen on the image. And, uh, and what are the reasons for cracks? Yes, we see from here, many places they are misusing it. And also when it keeps on this chair, something like this, we can see this cracks coming up. It'll fall out easily. That's why we need screening. Or people are sitting like this, or these are the, some of the um, uh, uh, cracks which are coming in, and also these pointed edges. So generally we need to hang it or roll it onto a um, mobile machine when we're using. Roll this, preferably, preferably it's a vinyl apron is better, or hang it good on a hanger. So we can use mild soap or detergent and hang the apron dry, or don't or do not bleach it, or do not use for autoclave. Finally, coming to disposal, we, are, we don't have any proper standards in Indian um, AERB, but there are some standards abroad which have used, 10 centimeter square, if there's an aggregate, if there's a lot of holes in the apron, in about 10 centimeter aggregate area, we can uh, uh, just uh, discard the apron, or 0.2 centimeter on the reproductive region, or one centimeter square on the neck. Similarly, we have a thyroid shield also. It's 0 0.03 centimeter square. So the method of disposal is, first we need to identify through the same thing, whether we discarded the right apron through our inventory system, dispose through a recycling company, who can recycle lead materials, disposed by hazardous waste carrier, disposable by uh, delivering aprons to a local uh, landfill. But the best thing is to contact the pollution control board and, but the good part is lead-free aprons can be disposed through hospital waste management because it doesn't contain lead. So disposal of aprons should not be regarded as a conventional waste, but as a hazardous waste. Uh, so some of these uh, references. But when we want to buy a lead apron, it has to, the, the maintenance starts right from the uh, purchase till this uh, end of this. That's the life sc lifespan of the lead apron. Thank you. Any questions from the audience?
Venezuela. I'm not sure um, if I've missed, uh, you know, something. I just wanted to know that you did outline the wrong practices, doctor, like which can cause yeah, issues. Yeah. Did you, I saw that, uh, but did you analyze as to how much of it was a problem in your hospital? Yeah, this was from our hospital. Whenever yeah. we have any cracks, we dispose it. No, no, no. Did you analyze where, how much percentage of wrong no. practices? Yeah. So I we have not analyzed wrong practices. Yeah. Once when it's screening only, we'll get to know. It's a quite a big hospital, no? In so these are certain things happening in operation theater, in cath labs. So this was more like a descriptive yeah, uh, yeah. thing about what are the wrong yeah. 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 Shall we move on to the next presentation? For uh, the one, minute. Uh, one minute. Uh, one more question. Okay, we'll take this question. Again. Now you kept on mentioning cracks, cracks. So what did you refer to as cracks? The cracks, yeah, not me. <laughs> the cra <laughs> okay. <so laughs> the. Uh, Generally, what uh, rubber, lead rubber aprons, when it's uh, bought, it doesn't maintain that ideal temperature that is required. When this is used in operation data, which is uh, al always air-conditioned, or maybe some places not, uh, when it is folded, it gets cracked, and then it falls down. And uh, we will not see it in the naked eye, but through screening. So those are the cracks which I was talking about. One for image was there. Apparently, it's not seen here now. I hope that is correct. Right, thanks. <laughs>